I'm gonna go over the electrical and hydraulic hookup for a muskox snowblower. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, for sure the hydraulic hookup, there's, we run two flat, flat face half inch or number 12 couplers. Um, there are a few loaders. Now again, if you're high flow, they'll run a number 16 coupler and uh, we try to work with you to make sure that we have the right coupler, but 95% of them run this exact coupler, which we ship the blower with. The only thing that there's a variation in these couplers, we ship them out with, on the tank, we will able to follow that forward to our aluminum block. And it, if you look at our block, you'll see a T, which stands for tank or return. So this would be the return port on the block. On every loader that I'm familiar with, um, the return is the male. Other than Bobcat, they run the return the female. So if you ever get a muskox blower and you switch from say a John Deere to a, a Bobcat or vice versa, these fittings need to be flipped around or interchanged. The way you can tell that it's wrong when you start your blower up, the chute will rotate one direction. You won't be able to control it. What it's trying to do is to run the blower in reverse. So anyway, enough on the hydraulic hoses. And you can see where we feed the hydraulic hoses in the electrical wire is through this loop low on the mounting plate right by your pivot point. If you had it mounted up higher as you rotate forward, it'll put tension on your uh, wire or your hydraulic hose. So anyway, make sure it's fed through this lower loop. We ship them that way, but if you ever do work on something or uh, do any kind of repairs, make sure it goes through that loop. Same thing with the electrical wire. We generally, I'll show you how we feed it through by the block, but then we wrap the electrical wire around the hydraulic hoses so it doesn't bulge out and get into a pinch point and uh, cause some damage for you. As you'll notice, when we ship the blower, we have the wire harness coming by this bracket and it's cable tied on. If you do replace a harness, just reverse the process, but you'll see we run the cable along a couple cable ties to hold it in position. There are electronic solenoids on the snowblower and what they do, they're just 12 volt. They have a ground wire and a hot wire and they are different colors. And that is the relationship when you plug it into your drive unit um, generally, they'll have what's called a Deutsch or a 14 pin connector. These are the Deutsch connectors that most loaders use or drive units. They're either a 14 pin or an 8 pin, other than Bobcat, and I'll show you that after a little bit here how uh, we have a converter to convert the uh, Bobcat signal to run our snowblower. But these wires that go to the coils are related to the pins that come out of this connector. On your skid loader or your articulating loader or whatever you're running, will if they have the 14 pin or the eight pin, they'll have letters correlating which pin out is in what location. Um, and you'll see there'll be A, B, C, D, E, and right on up on the face also as I remove the back, if I was gonna switch a pin in the rubber in the back, it has a letter indicating which slot you're in. So all you're doing is relating this slot to a pin on your drive unit that matches. So if it's a B port and that's a positive, it'd match a B port on your uh, drive unit. There also is a ground pin and you have to watch, of course, if you have the ground pin to a hot pin, you'll blow a fuse on the loader. So we do have a chart, which I'll show you that here. You can get it off the uh, internet and it'll show how we attach 
the different pinouts. You can see along this column, it'll show different brand loaders, and it shows the pinout location and how it relates to which one of these four different color wires. So the best way to do it, if you had trouble, you can sure give us a call or look at this chart, study it, and it'll show you, you know, like here's an H. An H would show the orange, it's the left solenoid, the outer plug. So just by studying that, you're able to darn near do any wire configuration. There is, I wouldn't call it confusion, but CAT on their skid loaders, if it's a different model like an XPS or an XHP to be able to get the loader to go into high flow, there is a jumper wire that we have within our plug-in. You have to take the back off and insert that plug into the correct outlet port. So it's all explained on this chart uh, pretty well. So. Okay, these, the way these wires are plugged into, they're a Deutsch type connector. It's a square connector. You push this tang down and you can pull them out. And uh, they are sealed for the elements. Uh, anyway, to reinsert it, you just push it in and they clip in. And that's, you just got to make sure when you insert them that they're securely in there. I've seen where we've had this partially inserted. It's not falling out, but you're not making connection. So make sure they're inserted all the way. And then this layout that we go on the block is always the same color configuration. And you'd see that on our chart. Um, you know, the white wire. It's called left solenoid inner plug. Orange wire is left solenoid outer plug. And if you followed, if you look at this setup, you can follow the hoses. You can see there's two solenoids and all they do is pull a needle in and out, feeds hydraulic fluid through these lines to do your different functions. So you need to have the blower running to be able to function the flipper, the rotate. As you see what I'm talking about, it runs hydraulic fluid through this block and you're really just stealing a little bit of hydraulic flow through the solenoids to be able to run those two functions. So pretty straightforward. Okay, on these electronic coil packs, like I say, they are just a 12 volt coil each one has a ground wire going to it. So our harness, you'll see there's only five pins coming out the 14 pin or eight pin outlet. The ground wires are all connected together and come out one pin. And then each color has an individual pin. When we're talking about location that you put them on the block, that is something that we have learned which button in the skid loader we like to engage to do a certain function. That's not saying if you'd like a different button to create the rotate left, you can interchange these. It You aren't gonna hurt anything. You could put the green one here, the white one here. It doesn't matter, it won't hurt anything. It just be ergonomically which buttons you like to push. Um, the other thing I guess to say here, is your loader does need to have four functions or four buttons to be able to run this setup. If that, if you do not have that, there are the companies that build the loaders or drive units do have options that you can update and get four controls. If that's not an option you'd like, we do have a remote control that you can put in your skid loader. On our snowblower to convert the signal on a Bobcat loader, which is a seven pin plug-in. It's called seven pin, just like the 14 pin. Not all ports are populated. Anyway, we supply this with the blower. If you are running a Bobcat and what it does, it converts the signal from a seven pin Bobcat controller through this CAN bus controller to convert it to 14 pin. So now it's converted. So this is what all the other 
uh, drive unit companies use is this 14 pin. So it's just like this is what's mounted on the loader. You plug this in to your Bobcat, now you've converted it to what I call a standard 14 pin. Then you take our cord, which we supply with the blower, and plug in. We have the ports in the correct location. Plug this in, you can run the blower. The nice part about that, now you've converted that signal, you are able to use this 14 pin to run other attachments also. Most drive units, like we talked about earlier, do run a 14 pin. There's an eight pin, and like we had talked about, Bobcat does run a different uh, controller, a seven pin. When the different drive units run the same 14 pin, they all seem to want to configure their pinouts different. Uh, so anyway, we would, if you call us, we can ship you a harness that'll match the blower and your exact unit. Say if you switch from a Kubota to a John Deere, we can ship you a harness. We do color code them. This happens to be a Bobcat, it's white, but we, do sh we will ship you a harness. But if you want to take this on yourself, it is very doable. This, it's called a Deutsch connector. You can unthread the back of the connector You can see I already had loosened these screws with my big fat fingers. Take that clamp off the back and then the back end of the Deutsch plug on threads. And you'll see you can feed this sleeve and hold collar back. Now you can, it's exposed inside here. You probably won't be able to see it, but there is uh, letters next to each one of the ports where these wires go into. And you'll see there's little white plugs. What we do is insert them in there so moisture doesn't come through. Those, if you take a small needle nose or a, a, a probe of some sort, you can push those white uh, little plugs out and move them to the port that you have removed the wire from. You can see in here, there's just one black wire, and that is the ground, and it's coming through to a port that you can see on the front side, which is the B port. So it says B port on this side and B on this side, so you don't have to be flipping back and forth. This one ground wire is spliced together up here, so it's one coming out of the plug, but you see four here, there's a splice here that we join four wires into the one wire. And then here we have four different colors and you can see the four colors going into here. So all it is, if you wanted to move to a different port, you remove that pin and move it to the port that is related to the outlet port on your skid loader. A nice way to do that is Either you can go to the loader, clamp onto the ground pin, and touch a light on it or ohmmeter, and check which button pushes, which button you push creates a charge to what pin. The other thing you can do also is plug this in if the ports are lined up, put your probe into the uh, Deutsch connector here and see which one you're charging. It's a way to figure out what wire is getting charged by one what button, and uh, then you can plug it into your uh, snowblower. Anyway, I'll show you how these come out. All they, it's a rubber plug in here, and there's a little notch or a step in the uh, metal connector, so you'll need a little removal tool. We do have these available. You can give us a call or send us an email. We'll send one out to you. They are a Deutsch, uh, connector remover tool, you can see you just slide it in alongside the uh, fitting and it expands that rubber out so now you can push out the, uh, the uh, fitting.
so there you can see when this slides over here, all it's doing is expanding that rubber. There's a little collar on this pin right here that you're just releasing or pushing the rubber back to release that pin. So there, now if I were gonna change ports, I would just push, like I said, that rubber plug out, push this into that hole or that slot. I, a lot of times, I use some uh, silicone spray or some lubricant to get it to slide through that rubber a little easier. But you just slide it into place. You gotta be sure when you look at the front, you'll see that the metal is about lined up with the face. If you don't push this in far enough, one thing it won't lock in, the other thing it won't engage properly with the pin. So pretty straightforward. Then uh, of course reverse what you did, reclamp the end on and you should be ready to go. Thank you.